Hello everyone, I'm Jim Lewis, founder of Model Train Technology, and today we have a new product to announce. Actually, it's an upgrade to an existing product, and that product was the very first product that we made, uh, and that is the N Scale 144mm light board. And uh, this is my Amtrak train, and when I retired, I wanted to put some lights in these cars. And so uh, some fiddling and we came up with this light board. It has a DCC decoder in it. And today we're announcing uh, motion sensing. Um, you may be familiar with this behavior, if you will. Um, when you pick up your phone, the phone uh, screen comes on. So how does that happen? Well, there's an accelerometer inside of there. It's a solid state, very clever little device. Uh, it's very tiny and it figures out uh, three dimensions at pitch, pitch raw, and yoll, uh, roll, and, and so it will know its orientation. Well, we took that chip and put it onto the circuit board so that when the train moves, the lights come on. Now, in the past, the DCC controller, uh, I'm going to use an Digitrack system, in order to turn the lights on, you would press the F0 and the lights in all the cars would come on. Uh, but then you, if you're doing something else with the layout, you've got to turn the lights on and off. And that, while it's nice, it got to be cumbersome. So I wanted the lights to go on when the train moves. Now, um, I'm going to demonstrate this and then we're going to zoom in. Um, we have uh, redesigned all of the boards. So for the last uh, quite a number of months, uh, all the caboose boards, the HO boards, and all the N-scale boards were all redesigned with the same circuitry. So that makes our manufacturing a little bit easier in the software development. And uh, we made some quite substantial advances in the manufacturing process. Um, in fact, I'll mention that now. Um, to put all of that circuitry on the N-scale board was really challenging. And uh, many of you know that the, um, the caboose board is quite packed. And we had you solder a piggyback board uh, with the capacitors. Well, now, not only did we add the motion sensing onto the circuit board, um, but we've also manuf we'll manufactured these with the super caps already installed. So that cut the thickness in about a half. And I have a caboose board, uh, caboose here in N scale, and we'll, we'll show you that in a second. So that's very cool. Uh, this board is a, uh, typically the boards are two layer. There's a top and a bottom, and, and that works pretty well. I've got enough room to run all the circuitry. In the N-scale caboose, that's not the case. And so we went to what's called a four-layer board. Um, and that's pretty sophisticated stuff for us. So five years into it, we're getting, we're getting more and more clever, let's say. Uh, we also, uh, in the past, uh, you may know that uh, you use the same size board for HO. Uh, we now have a dedicated HO caboose board uh, with the capacitors on the back as well. A little bit more room. There's a push, bigger push button and a little bit easier to install in the HO car. So what I want to do, uh, we call this train sense. <laughs> so sensing motion and train sense, uh, just playing around with that a little bit. Um, I have my Amtrak engine. I'm just going to uh, fire this up. So um, I'm going to just turn this on. You see the lights come on automatically. Um, the last car we've programmed a little bit differently. So um, when we first invented this uh, sort of prototype several years ago, I showed it to someone and he said, well, actually the lights coming on uh, like you demonstrated is not quite right. But let me, sh let me show you what we're talking about. So uh, the train has stopped and after about eight seconds, we've programmed it for the lights to fade off. And you'll see that now. Now what's going on over here is a little bit different. And what I want to mention is that built into the circuitry and the software, uh, is the ability for you to change the behavior of when the lights come on, at what brightness, and so forth. So in this case, these lights come on when the train moves, and then they wait about eight seconds after the train stops, and then they go off. So there are three, state, uh, three st uh, states, let's call them. Uh, at rest, uh, so you can set a light level for at rest. Now these are all set to off at rest, but you'll notice this last car is set to, a, uh, it's on, but at a slightly lower level. Um, the next behavior state is moving. So when the train is moving, you can tell it, 
okay, turn the lights on to a certain level, and you can have those lights go on instantly, or you can set a fade mode. So in this case, I have it set to fade. So when the train goes on, it's going to fade. Now, the other thing is when the train comes back in, um, usually, we, as we saw, the lights would just fade off after the, the train stops. Well, this particular uh, uh, person said, well, wait a second, the lights should be on. Um, when the train starts to move, maybe the lights dim. But then when the train stops, you want the lights to come back on bright so the passengers can disembark. And then after a few minutes, the lights may be fade to it at rest. And that's exactly what we programmed here. So the whole point is that you've got a lot of variation and, and uh, flexibility. Um, and uh, we're going to show you a little bit more of that in just a second. I'll go into more detail. But here's a couple of examples. We'll show those on the screen. Um, here's the uh, programming of CV so you can get that uh, behavior. And we have five preset uh, behavior. So if you just want to get started and get it running, uh, there's a way to do that. So let's watch the train again and have it go around. And you notice that the lights dim down a little bit more than the at rest. Train's coming around, give it a, more, a little bit more juice. Okay, so we're going to stop this one in the sort of more in the middle so you can see what's going on. All right, so after a couple of seconds, the train has stopped, and now it's time for the passengers to uh, uh, disembark. So you saw the light came on, and so that's programmed into the behavior. All right, so that's pretty cool. All right, so we're going to move the train around and uh, just show you what we have on, uh, on the other mode. So all right, so let me put, put that on stop mode. All right, here's the caboose board. We, I took the board and replaced the one. This is the one we've had in the demo. And you can see the lights come on and the lights uh, will stay on for a few seconds and then go off. Now, this one also has a lantern on the back. Um, you can add the lantern to your order if you want. Uh, the standard kit comes with the floating brass, so I'll show you that, and the light board and some wire and a chip. Uh, the, the lantern is separate now because some people wanted it, some people didn't. Okay, so um, I'm going to uh, pause the camera here and we'll just zoom in so you can see uh, how these other, uh, other ones look close up. All right. Anyway, that's our uh, announcement and uh, we're very excited about that. We are going to be shipping next week. Uh, so you can place your orders now and uh, if you have any questions, contact us by phone 407-242. 5436 or by email support at modeltraintechnology.com. Okay, here's the N scale caboose. You can see the lantern flashing in the back, and I'm going to just give it a little nudge, and you can see that the lights uh, come on, and uh, the, the all of the light boards uh, LED colors are available in four colors. The most prominent ones are 2000K, which are what we're using here. Uh, they tend to be more yellow color, more nat natural incandescent. Uh, the lights I have in the Amtrak are 3000K, a little bit whiter, um, and then 5000 and 6500 are available, which are really blue and, and very fluorescent. Here we have the HO caboose and the HO standard size, uh, 264 millimeter uh, setup here. And uh, I'm just going to, this was uh, using the new HO caboose board. You can see motion sensing there. Uh, there's no lantern on this. And this is uh, just a car I picked up off the shelf. Uh, I wanted to do a quick demonstration. I wanted to show uh, the floating brass underneath. So uh, we changed the wheels to insulated wheels, which means that uh, one side is insulated and not connected to the axle. And you put uh, one side facing one way and you pay face on the other truck, you face them the other way. And then the floating brass connects the axles. Now, why we like this system so much, uh, the brass is not connected to anything. It's just floating there. That's why we call it floating brass. And because of that, it's not pinching the wheels. It's just when the car is in this form, the, the brass just rides on top of the axle, 
uh, which uh, provides a lot of con surface contact because we wrap it around the axle. And uh, this is just really simple and the best technique. Uh, there's a wire soldered to the brass that goes up through the body of the car. And let's just take this off and I'll show you what it looks like inside. Um, I just did a quick and dirty uh, piece of frosted glass on the inside. Um, in the, there are three or four very detailed caboose installation videos on our channel. And the only thing that's different is the, the board itself uh, and its function, but the process of connecting the floating brass and installing the board and uh, preparing the, the carcass is the same. So here you see the new HO board. Uh, this little chip for curiosity is the accelerometer. It's very tiny. Uh, there's a little push button. Uh, so you've, even if you're uh, using DCC, if you wanted just a, a quick setup, um, in the and later on in this video, you'll see we'll go into detail about the configuration steps. But uh, there are five presets. So while it's on the track or powered, you press it once, one, two, three, four, or five times. Um, to reset the board, you press it eight times. And uh, pretty straightforward, pretty simple, easy to wire. So for the wire from the brass goes up through the body and connects to each of the pads on, on the board. And you're ready to go. And just put that onto the rails. Uh, the blue light indicates power. And uh, we'll, let me get that back wheel on there. There we go. And then that'll just fade off in a minute. And this is a good way to, to set it up and configure it. Uh, you can see what's going on. Get access to the push button if you need it. And so there you go. So that's the uh, train sense motion sensing for the HO caboose. Now, I left the top off this. This particular car is a Walters, I uh, forget what the, the brand, the Walters type is, the model number, I mean. Uh, but you've got to twist the car body. It's rather <laughs> frightening, actually, to get the top off. So I just left it loose in this case. Uh, but you can see that um, we've got some people inside, and we'll just put it on the track. There we go. And you can see we can... Uh, set the rear lights to flash on and off or not. Uh, so if you have a long car, you only want the last car to be flashing. And there it goes. There's the motion sensing. And you move it again. So your train is all set up. This also uses the floating brass uh, technique. You can see that. And we'll take the car apart. Let's widen up a little bit. There we go. And just loosen that up and there you can see the board uh, connected to the, the ceiling and uh, not much else to it. Really simple. You can see the wiring on the left hand side for the flashing LEDs. Here we have the whole family of train sense motion sensing LED light boards from model train technology. So at the top here we have 264 millimeter uh, center line. So this is the single, we call it. And it has uh, 12 capacitors on it, super caps. And uh, we have a version of that board, I don't have it uh, here, uh, that has two row, sorry, uh, yeah, two row. So here's the N scale two row. So you can see the LEDs on the outside. There's an HO version of this board with the LEDs on the outside. And in both cases, for N scale and HO, uh, the purpose of that is to light the cars that have the sleepers uh, because the dividing wall for the sleeper is in the center of the car and, and the LED in this case is in the center of the car. So it didn't light the rooms very well. So you can use the two row version for that. Um, the next size board is 222 millimeters long, uh, 192. Uh, 192 millimeters. Uh, then this is the, these two are the standard N scale. So the Amtrak that you saw earlier has these. These are 144 millimeter. So the product code is N144, and then the color of the LED. The color of the LEDs can be uh, there are four choices: 2,000, 3,000, 5,000, and 6,500. 2,000 and 3,000 are the most common. 2,000 for older vintage cars and cabooses. Uh, 3,000 would be the recommended one in, uh, for sort of Amtrak and more modern cars, uh, sort of a daylight color. Um, so then we have the 124 millimeter. 
Uh, so this is perfect for baggage cars. And then we do have some specialty cars that people have asked us for. Uh, this board is 106 millimeters uh, long. Um, we also have our dome board. This does not have any decoder or train sense on it, uh, but this can be used in conjunction with any of the other boards to light a dome area. And uh, while some domes are pretty high, uh, pretty long, sorry, um, some are short, so you can cut this board at different lengths uh, as you need and solder some wires that are connected to the board. Um, here are the two caboose boards. So here's the new HO size uh, caboose board with the, the cap, super caps uh, already attached on the back. So you just uh, fasten that. And then here is the N scale uh, caboose board. You can see it's pretty packed and it has the super caps on the back. And there's, uh, if you check the, all the recent videos on our webs on our uh, YouTube channel, pardon me, um, you will see a detailed installation um, into that caboose of this new train sense motion sensing caboose board. And uh, I didn't mention it earlier, but uh, the previous caboose boards for both N and HO had three LEDs. Uh, we were able to squeeze a fourth LED onto the board. So uh, we're pretty excited about that. And um, there you go. Here's an explanation about how train sense works. So this is the first preset behavior, behavior number one. And on the left hand side, you can see it says at rest, in motion, arrival, and then at the bottom at rest. And the, the sheet here is designed to be a flow through uh, what happens. Um, if the car is at arrival and the motion starts again, it'll go back to the at in motion state. On the left hand side are the options that you can set. So in this case, the at rest light level is set to zero. So that's uh, the top of that uh, sort of brownish thing where it says zero. <clears throat> Right under it, it says fade option off. So that means that when the car moves from, uh, changes from at rest to in motion, the light will go on to 150. Now the numbers, by the way, are from zero to 255. So that's the value, the maximum value you couldn't put in one CV. From a practical standpoint, the light level at 150, maybe 200 is all you really ever need. And we recommend you make it as low as possible because the capacitor capacity, if you, <laughs> is based on how much uh, current is being pulled from the LEDs. And the light, uh, you can't really tell the difference between about 150 uh, the setting up to uh, and above that. In other words, the brightness doesn't get enough brightness, more bright to make a difference, and yet it does consume more uh, current, and that drains the, uh, the capacitors, actually voltage, but. Okay, so now, in this case, we have the fade option off. So it, it, once the car starts, it'll just jump to 150 uh, setting. Um, then the car, when the car stops, first stops after it's been in motion and it has to be stopped for about a quarter of a second. Um, you, can, uh, you can play with some of these timings to make it longer, but let's just say when the car stops after it's been in motion, that's what we call arrival. And what happens next is it's, there's a time delay and the time delay could be anywhere from zero to 255. Those are seconds. So <clears throat> while the car is in motion, the light's at 150, it stops, the car stops, and now the timer kicks in. The timer is zero, it'll just go to the brightness setting, in this case, also 150. So you won't really see anything uh, in this case. Um, and then after the car has been stopped, uh, you go to the, time, the second time delay, and you'll see it says time delay three seconds. And so what that does is after the car has stopped, in this case, it waits two seconds, sets the lights at 150, so you won't see any difference. Um, and then the time delay is three seconds. And then at rest is 
the train has been stopped after the timer has expired. So in this case, three seconds, and the light will go to zero. Okay. So the next one, the fourth Amtrak car that we demonstrated earlier is set to behavior four. So in this case, the light is set at 30 while the car is at rest. When the car starts to move, it fades. You see the fade option on and the motion uh, in motion, the lights dim slightly from 30 to 15. Uh, then the train runs around, finally it stops. When it stops, the time delay of three seconds kicks in. The fade option is on again, and this time the light will change, go from 15 to 100. So the light will brighten up, and then the time delay of 10 seconds. So it will stay at 100, until 10 seconds has expired, and then it will go back to the at rest setting, uh, which in this case, uh, well, it should be 30. There's a typo there. Uh, it should be 30, which is the at rest setting. This is, these are the five preset behaviors for train sense. So going across one, two, three, four, five, and then the very things that we just covered on the left-hand side, these are the settings of CVs. So the first one is the train sense start mode. So when you power up the train or put it on the track, um, it starts up in, start in train sense mode. If you make it zero, um, then the motion sensing will not kick in. It won't turn the lights on and off, uh, but you can turn the lights on with DCC. So uh, you just have to decide whether you want to control the train lights by DCC or have the train sense do it automatically. So one means it's on and automatic. So there you see the at rest in motion light values. Then after arrival, uh, wait two seconds. The arrival light should be 150. Wait before it goes to the at rest, three seconds. Okay, so that's what we just covered. Then the bottom three are for the rear, uh, the bottom two, or the next two are for the rear re uh, red light. Or, and it can be on or off, and it can be solid or blinking. So in this case, for preset number one, the red light is on, and the rear mode blinking mode is also on, and fade is off. And so likewise, going across the, ta uh, the table here, uh, these are different values that are already pre-programmed, and all you have to do is hit the, the button that's on the board once, twice, three, four, or five times, and the lights in the car will flash, briefly for three times, and then that will be set, all right? The last sheet we want to show you is the motion settings and their relative uh, CV values. So the way you, you, if you're a DCC user with your engine, then this shouldn't be any problem. Uh, you put the train on the programming track, if you're using Digitrax, for example, or you can program from the main um, or a programming track if you're using NCE. Um, each DCC controller handles it slightly differently, but the idea here is that you put a value, you dial in the value of the CV, so 59 would be the first one, and you put in a value, one or zero, and you hit enter, and it writes that to that memory location. Essentially, that's what this is. These are memory locations on the chip. So the first one is train sense or DCC at startup at rest values, in motion, arrival, and so forth, all the way down to fade mode, which we've already covered. Now the next one, uh, we talked about setting the preset by pushing the button. Um, once you have the car installed and the board installed and everything, it might be hard to get to the button. So there's another way to activate the presets, and that is to write, while you're on the programming mode or programming track, set CV value 68 to one of those five behaviors. Now zero is off, so nothing will happen, but let's say you set it to one. And now when you take the train from the programming track and put it on the main track, the power will come up. It will read CV 68 to see what's there. If it's a zero, it'll just go on and use whatever settings you've used before. If it's a number between one and five, it will load that preset value, one of these, into each of the CVs above. It'll automatically populate all of those, and then it will set CV68 back to zero, and, um, and there you go. Now, 
in the case where you've done that and you have one of these preset behaviors and now 68 is zero, so it won't do it again, you can go in and change any one of these individual values. So you can say, oh, I want the in motion light on uh, that, you know, I set the preset behavior to one, which is 150 for in motion light, but I want it to be a little brighter. So you go to CV61 and change it from anywhere, anything you want from 150 all the way up to 255 as, as uh, we see, we show here. Okay. Now for using DCC, um, the, the CV values 47 and 48 determine the brightness of the light when it comes on. So in the DC, DCC mode, you use F0 to turn the lights on, just like you would an engine. And whatever value is in CV47 will establish the brightness for the main lights and for the rear, typically blink, blinking light. Um, and then lastly, we have Digitrax and all others. Um, one of the funny things about Digitrax is on the display, it shows zero to 99 um, for the speed. And we use the speed to dial in the brightness of the lights and, and, and some other things. And um, the, the board doesn't know which DCC system you're using. So in order for it to understand what Digitrax is doing, um, it actually has to calculate that to 128 because there are 128 st speed steps but it only shows 99. So it's 99 is a percentage of the total, not the actual speed step. So Digitrax doing some, some uh, translating there. Um, all the other DCC systems show the actual speed value from zero to 128. So just to get that synchronized and working properly, depending on which system you have, uh, it's either Digitrax for CV, uh, one for CVs 46 or zero. All right. So that's it. That's the, those are the instructions. Um, you play around with it. It takes a little bit of experimenting um, uh, to determine exactly what's going to work best for you. Um, hope you have fun with that and enjoy.